In this video, I'll be giving you 10 photography tips that I've learned throughout my journey. Some are more basic, others a bit more advanced, and some are specific to Olympus cameras, but most aren't. Hi, my name is Laurel and welcome back to the channel. Here I take the big budget approach and throw it out the window in favor of more realistic and budget friendly equipment, gear and software. The first three tips are meant to help you get the best dynamic range performance out of your camera. In my case, it is Micro Four Thirds and the format does get a lot of semi-justified backlash for it. So here's a couple ways to help you improve it. The first tip is use ISO 200 or whatever the base ISO on your camera is. In the case of Olympus cameras, it is ISO 200, it's the base ISO, it's perfectly optimized and it's the one that works best. So yes, it's actually better than going down to ISO 100 or actually ISO 64, those perform worse. Second tip is shoot raw. As obvious as it might sound, shooting raw is so important. As I've mentioned in a previous video, the Olympus RAW files are super flexible and super easy to work with. And you can easily bring back details in post, especially from the shadows, which actually brings me to my next point. It's better underexposing than overexposing your images. If you're shooting a very high contrast scene, it's better to severely underexpose the image than to leave the sky completely blown out. Because in post, the shadows have a lot more information to recover and to work with than the highlights do. Tip number four is disable instant playback. If you're impatient like me, which you probably are, you might get extremely annoyed when you have to wait for the photo that you just took to disappear from the screen so you can take another one. Fortunately, you can turn this feature off or at least make it faster. All you have to do is you go to the menu, go down to this wrench thing symbol, select rec view, and then just choose the perfect, the perfect amount of time for you. It's zero seconds for me. Tip number five is use the function lever and get used to it before you discard it. The way I use it, I've actually talked about this in a previous video, but the way I use it is in position one, my dials change the aperture, the front dial changes the aperture, and the back dial changes the shutter speed. In position 2, I think the front dial changes the white balance, and the back dial changes the ISO. I don't really care about changing the white balance, as I always have it on auto, but being able to change the ISO just by moving a lever, <laughs> I think that the one inconvenience that this lever has becomes irrelevant. And that one inconvenience is that you are going to forget which position you left the, you left the lever at. Which means that you're going to make the mistake of changing the white balance when you meant to change the aperture. But if you shoot raw, which you definitely should, that's not really a problem. Because you can just fix it in post. I love it when people just park outside of my window and talk and talk and talk. If you have a mirrorless camera, which these days you probably do, then contrary to what you might think, using the EVF actually drains the battery more than using the LCD screen on the back of your camera. This is because it's not an optical viewfinder, the ones you find on traditional DSLRs. It's an electronic viewfinder, which means it has a screen, and that screen is usually higher resolution or at least has a faster refresh rate than the LCD on the back of your camera. And that's why the battery doesn't last as long. Tip number seven is master the super control panel. I think it's what it's called. I have no idea whether this feature exists like this on other camera brands, but I watch a lot of YouTube videos and I've never come across anything like this. If you don't know what it is, the Super Control Panel is this awesome screen that you can access at the press of a button on every Olympus camera. You can access basically everything you need to take photos properly and you can change all of your essential settings right here. Which means that all of the poorly organized features and options that the full menu offers you are just extras. Now, don't get me wrong, customizable buttons are amazing and even probably even faster than using the super control panel, but honestly, my muscle memory isn't capable enough to memorize all of the buttons and what they do. At least they never go there without my head's consent. What this means is that while I use my thumb to change the shutter speed without having to think about it for even a second because I've gotten so used to it, there are way, way too many buttons and way too many settings that you need to change for, for it to be possible for me to memorize them all. Enter Super Control Panel, a super immediate, user-friendly, and awesome way to easily adjust your settings. So yeah, master the thing. Memorize where all the things are so you don't have to take too long looking for them, and learn to take full advantage of it your way. Trust me, it will be worth it. These next two tips are for low-life photography, one of the other big disadvantages of Micro Four Thirds. Tip number eight, I think, is do not leave your camera on auto ISO and trust your camera's IBIS. 
you're one of those people that shoot with auto ISO, you really shouldn't do that in low light. You don't need to shoot in full manual mode, I know that a lot of people don't like to do it, and especially if you're a beginner, shooting in full manual can be quite daunting, but even if you're in aperture priority or in shutter priority mode, you can still set your ISO manually. The reason why you don't want to leave it on auto is because the camera will choose a much higher ISO than is actually necessary. So unless you're shooting moving subjects, you can use slower shutter speeds and rely on your camera's in-body image stabilization. How slow, you ask? Very. You can use very, very slow shutter speeds with the amazing stabilization that Olympus cameras have to offer. Trust me. So 1 over 50 is not a dangerous shutter speed. 1 over 10 is nothing to be afraid of. Half a second is a piece of cake and two full seconds are still usable. If you know what you're doing and you practice, you can actually shoot handheld with a four second shutter speed. And yes, the image stabilization is that good. So lower your shutter speed as much as possible and see what ISO that leaves you with and don't let the camera decide for you. Tip number nine is use prime lenses. This tip usually annoys me a little bit when YouTubers give it because not everybody has a bunch of prime lenses, but if you do have prime lenses, then use those because those are generally better for low light photography. If you don't have any primes, then never mind, you don't need them. And finally, this last tip is for those who are having trouble achieving perfect sharpness in their photos. So tip number 10 is choose your focus point as precisely as you can. Don't be lazy and think like, ah, oh, that's close enough. I've definitely been guilty of this before and still am sometimes, but it's really important that you try as hard as you can to nail that focus. If you're taking a portrait, the focus should be on the person's eye. Just choose whichever one you want if the, the person is facing you directly, like I am right now. But if they're facing off to a side, then focus on whichever eye is closest. Same thing applies if you're taking pictures of a dog or a cat. Their noses are actually closer to you than their eyes are. Their faces are not as flat as ours. So if you miss focus by just a little bit, <laughs> it'll be quite visible. You do not want to focus on their nose, on their eyes always. If you're actually taking a, a picture of a person, the same thing happens if you miss focus, but it just won't be as noticeable as it is with an animal, except if you have a very fast lens capable of a very thin depth of field. So try as hard as you can to place the focus exactly where you want it, it's crucial. And you'll see that your images get a lot sharper. All right, if you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and leave a comment down below. If you have any more tips, lay it on me, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.